starts talking about uh, how we're going to change everything, and then after a while, you're going to hear him or his youth pastor or the guy he brings in to train everybody on prayer or the conference that he talked you into going to. They're going to start introducing everybody to contemplative prayer in some fashion and in some way. That's how it's happening everywhere. You show me a church that took out the pews and took out this and got a new building going and they're not using the Bible anymore. You show me that church and I'll show you a place where eventually they're going to end up in contemplative prayer. And I can tell you that's no more than hearing from familiar spirits, devils, seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And this is what they're giving heed to instead of the words of God. In Acts chapter 16, I want you to look at this. The Bible says, And it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a, look here, what is it? A spirit. A spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by Sue's saying. Stop right here. So number one, a different spirit. Number two, it's all about the money. Because harlots don't do what they do without being paid. Okay? Never forget that. Now, verse 17, the same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. <clears throat> and this did she many days. Stop right here. Repetition. And Paul knew she, and, and I want you to listen to this. Even though she is saying the right words on the outside, she has a spirit of divination on the inside. Look what Paul did. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that same hour. And I want to tell you something. That spirit needs to be driven out of churches, denominations, Bible colleges, you name it. God had to run that spirit away from me. Because I was going to fall for her. I was. Just goes to show you, they can say, Jesus, God, Christ, all this stuff, but there's a different spirit working on the inside of them, the one that they're listening to, instead of listening to what's in this book. Because, see, the Bible college did a pretty good job with them. Told them, that book ain't nothing. And it's, that's not the inerrant word of God. That thing's got s s holes and mistakes in it. Un we we'll never get to the bottom of, of where we even got this book. So the kid comes out of Bible college, like me, thinking there's no perfect Bible. And so what happens eventually, since they're not getting any nourishment, sustenance, power from this book, because they don't believe it, they fell for another spirit. It's inevitable. That's how the devil works. Get this out of the way first, then the man of sin can be revealed. Anyway. 1 Chronicles 10, 13, So Saul died for his transgression, which he committed against the Lord, even against the word of the Lord, which he kept not. And also for asking counsel of one that had a familiar spirit to inquire of it. Two things that Saul did. And there's, here's the difference between Saul and Solomon. And this is what God told David. David, Solomon, I'm going to put on your throne. And I'm going to be his father. And he's going to be his, my son. And if he sin, I will chastise him with the stripes of men. But my mercy will I not take from him like I took from Saul. And you just you think about this for a minute, okay? Saul started out good. He was prophesying by direction of the Holy Spirit. But something happened in him. Something changed. His wickedness got a hold of him. His pride or whatever it was. And Saul did not keep the words. He walked away from them. Solomon, however, don't you think about Solomon? Solomon, according to the Bible, is in heaven. How do I know this? Number one, God promised that he would not take his mercy away from Solomon. He promised that ever. He said he'll be my son. And if he does something wrong, I'll whoop the fire out of him. But I won't take my mercy from him. That's one thing. Second thing, the Bible says holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. That's how we got our Bible. Ecclesiastes, most of Proverbs, Song of Solomon, written by who? Solomon, holy man of God. Not by his own righteousness, because Solomon 
There wasn't a woman that he didn't want. A thousand of them? Are you kidding me? I mean, people dream about, guys dream about this, and this is why they look at pornography. They're looking at all these different kinds of women they'd like to be with. Solomon had them. He had, he had the wine, he had the women, he had the power, he had the money. He had everything that every man has ever wanted his whole life. And Solomon got to the end of his life and said, it's vanity. It's a waste. I wasted my whole life with this. He had true wisdom. But Saul, God took his mercy off of him because he kept not the word of the Lord. So when, since he couldn't hear from the word of the Lord anymore through the prophet Samuel, he decided, you know what? There's a gal in Endor, the witch of Endor. That's where Endor came from, from bewitched. And he said, I'm going to go to her and see if I can get, see if I can get some word in me. So he goes to her, and a lying spirit that was meant to be familiar to Saul lied to It was not Samuel. And I want to show you that. 1 Samuel 28, 13, And the king said unto her, Be not afraid, for what sawest thou? And the woman said unto Saul, I saw gods ascending out of the earth. And he said unto her, What form is he of? In other words, what these, what these gods look like? An old man cometh up, and he is covered with a mantle. Saul perceived that it was Samuel, and he stooped with his face to the ground and bowed himself. This was not Samuel. This was a familiar spirit. Samuel, think about Samuel. Samuel is the Word of God. Samuel is a prototype of Jesus. This Samuel came up out of the depths of the earth. He didn't come down from heaven. That's where this Samuel came up from. He came up from the pit. That's where he came from. And he was covered with a mantle, which means he was occulted, hidden, not revealed. There's a tarot card with an old guy with a mantle, and it, it's on the back of, um, I'm thinking this, um, Led Zepp, one of Led Zeppelin's albums. Okay, That's the image. That's who this is. It wasn't Christ. It wasn't Samuel. It was a lying, masquerading spirit. And Saul fell for it. And that's what all these people are doing. They're falling for it. So now, they're using this <clears throat> spirit of divination... And she, they're hearing from the voice on the inside of them, and she is bringing them all together into a collective. Now, now the people who are hearing the voice in the church are the same as the people hearing the voice in India, hearing the voice in China, hearing the voice in these other religions. In Sufi Islam, they have mystical practices where they hear the voice, and they follow the voice. The voice leads, and the voice tells them what to do. So now we're collecting everybody into the collective of, of oneness. Now we got them there. Now we're going to um, we're going to change everybody. Everything's got to change. We have to alter. We have to alter consciousness. We have to have a paradigm shift. We have to we have to we have to alter and transfigure and transform personal and social transformation in our time. That's what this is about. So back to this. Magazine, one magazine, shift, a change of direction. This is heaven. We're going this way. No, we're going to change direction now. That's what they're doing. It's all about change and transformation. Why do they use the word shift here in this magazine cover? Why do you see everywhere shift? First Baptist Church, Moore, Oklahoma. I know that church. I went to college out there in Moore, Oklahoma. Pastors Conference. Shift. Shift. This, uh, this one, April 9, 2008, Brian McLaren was there. Brian McLaren hears the voice. He, he does the contemplative deal. He hears the voice, and he says, everything must change. We've got to change everything. It's all messed up. It's all bad. Fourth Annual Finding the Gift in Shift Conference. Transformation, the quantum shift. Quantum. A quantum shift, quantum reality. Those are all new age terms, right from the playbook of, of uh, the Aquarian conspiracy. A new quantum reality, quantum, uh, bringing in spirits in, principalities, powers, rules of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. That's the spirits now that are taking control, and they're going to change everything. Notice the, notice the butterfly there. Why is that butterfly there? Because the butterfly didn't used to look like a butterfly. It used to look like a worm. But the butterfly had a 
paradigm shift and she came out of her grave, her cocoon, her prison. Now she's beautiful. You want to be like that, don't you? Think about it. Here's another one. Shift Nation. Shift Conference. Kingdom Power, Kingdom Authority. You see how it's all linked together? <clears throat> New paradigm ahead. Years ago, my wife bought me a book. She was trying to help me at one time. Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I started reading it. I just really couldn't get into it. It just felt empty to me. That was the first time I ever encountered the word. You, he, Stephen Covey said, you've got to have a paradigm shift. Something's got to alter and transform you. It's got to shift your consciousness, your perception, how you see things. I'm telling you, I don't know what it's going to be. Let me, show, let me show you what it looks like in the scriptures. In 2 Thessalonians 2, and for this, verse 11, For this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. And so what's going? To, something's going to happen. I don't know what it is yet. Something's going to happen in this world that is literally going to alter the thinking of every human being on the earth, except those who are still holding to the contract. In other words, we're not going to believe anything that ain't in the Bible. But there's going to be something that is going to be so tremendous, so huge, even the atheists are going to believe. And God said it's called strong delusion. I'm going to make them believe a lie. Marilyn Ferguson wrote in Aquarian Conspiracy, it's, it's called Provolutionary, an ascent of consciousness and paradigm shifts. A new world, as the mystics have always said, is a new mind. It is not more knowledge, but a new knowing. She said deep inner shifts may occur in response to disciplined contemplation. You see, stop right here. The whole purpose of the spiritual disciplines of the spiritual formation movement and the contemplative prayer is to get you to alter your thinking that you used to think that everything was in the Bible. Now you don't think that way anymore. That See, one leads to the other. Spiritual exercises, controlled breathing, techniques for inhibiting thought, music. Stop right here. Music. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in, and then a little light from heaven filled my soul. See, that's, that's the old music. That taught a clear gospel, didn't it? Okay. Now it's, let it rain, let it rain. Let it rain over and over and over and over. I heard a preacher call it. That's that 7-Eleven music. Seven words repeated 11 times in a row. Music, hypnosis. See, the music brings the state of mind in. You ever notice these worship services? The worship services all start out with a bang, da bang, da bang, da bang, da boom, da boom, da boom. They get everybody clapping and jumping and hopping. And then something changes in the worship service. Now they're going to bring in the slow music, the smooth music, to bring everybody down, to alter their consciousness. And then right after that, when the music's done, the preacher doesn't come in and say, okay, let me read the announcements today. Next week we're going to have a uh, bake sale down at the uh, Metropolitan Theater. He said, that doesn't do that. See, they, they bring the music down, and now they got you down there. Now the preacher is going to come out with his smooth words. Music. Hypnosis. Meditation. Reverie. And the wake of intense intellectual struggle. You know what reverie is? Reverie is revelings, raves, delirium, and all the related concepts. Revelings. That's exactly what, what Paul said in Galatians 5 um, was the works of the flesh. Galatians, here it is, right here. Hang on, hang on. Galatians chapter 5, he said the works of the flesh are envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings. That's what reveries are. They're ra